And it's not just a question of wages, it's a question of housing, it's a question of education, it's a question of living conditions, it's a question, a basic question of hope for the future. And we have to do something about it. The 1960s was a time of significant change for minorities in the United States. The civil rights movement was at the center of America's attention and consequently overshadowed an equally important fight in the fields in Delano, California. The Delano grape strikes and boycotts ultimately called into question the responsibilities of the government and local authorities to respond to unlawful conduct toward legal farm workers by their employers. I mean, think about the, the most horrible working conditions you can fathom. Um, and that's really what, what it was like. You know, bad, bad, bad treatment of workers, no water, no shade for the workers. How just is that? Initially, Chavez's union conducted small-scale demonstrations to fight the grape corporations. And it wasn't until December of 1965 that the movement gained momentum at the fields of Shenley Industries. Almost immediately, Shenley sought injunctions from local Californian courts that prohibited striking near their fields, effectively suspending the workers' right to peaceful assembly. In response, Chavez, with a crowd of several hundred people, marched to Sacramento to put pressure on the government to take a stance. Shenley soon agreed to sign a contract to improve wages and working conditions for its workers, effectively creating the first contract negotiated by the national farm workers. This growing conflict in Delano began to be heard around the country, leading Robert Kennedy, a senator from New York, to question the local authorities. And so he is sort of um, touched by, by the UFW and, and the work that they're doing. So when Robert Kennedy came, he brought, he brought credibility. He come and tells you know, people, you don't, you don't even know the Constitution of the United States, you better goddamn go read it. How can you go arrest somebody if they haven't violated the law? They're ready to violate the law, in other words. Could I suggest in the interim period of time, in the luncheon period of time, that the sheriff and the district attorney read the Constitution of the United States? While in Delano, he became a friend of Chavez and his union, and ultimately he took the battle to the national stage. In contrast, Ronald Reagan, governor of California at the time, responded by denying the existence of a strike and eating grapes publicly in defiance to humiliate Chavez and La Causa. There is no grape strike. No one's been able to find anyone picketing the vineyards who ever worked in them. And the only contracts that were signed were signed between Mr. Chavez Union and a few wineries that signed up under the coercion of his threats of boycott. Reagan believed in protecting the interests of businesses, whereas Kennedy believed it was the government's responsibility to protect the rights of individuals. During this time, Chavez heard rumors of violence from UFW members, prompting him to begin a 25-day hunger strike to demonstrate the importance of peaceful protesting. When Robert Kennedy was killed in 1968, they lost a supporter and a friend of the movement. The Jamara strike lasted for nearly three years until 19 table grape growers in California, including Jamara, signed a contract in July 1970. When the growers saw that they couldn't sell their grapes anymore, then that's when they decided that they needed to talk and they needed to, to bargain, they needed to negotiate. At this time, the boycott in total had 17 million people participating nationwide, making it the most widespread and effective boycott in history. Just two years after the end of extremely violent strikes, nationwide boycotts of grapes and lettuce continued. However, true relief for the farm workers was near at hand. On June 4, 1975, Governor of California Jerry Brown passed the California Agricultural Labor Relations Act, which was passed to ensure peace in the agricultural fields by guaranteeing justice for all agricultural workers and stability in labor relations. It doesn't matter what, what part of government you're from, you have a right of responsibility to protect all people and to treat them equitably. One of the most important resulting social movements from the Delano grape strikes was the Chicano movement of the 1970s, where Latin Americans from all across the U.S. took upon the principles of Cesar Chavez to ask for equal social treatment in their lives. I mean, to this day, when we think of the Chicano movement, we always think of, of the United Farm Workers. 